Welcome to Anime Chat One, where we inform you on the news making waves in Namibia and beyond all through the lunch hour. Now coming up in today's broadcast, Landless People's Movement Deputy Leader Hen Henry Henny Sebeb says Swapa will still lose votes in the 2024 national elections despite electing Netumbo Nandin Daitwa as their presidential candidate. The Office of the Auditor General has found that the Namibia Broadcasting Corporation cannot explain evidence of pay-as-you-earn capital set aside for its 2019 financial year. A group of business people was accused of being embroiled in a scheme that resulted in the finance ministry losing nearly 3.5 billion Namibian dollars in revenue. These stories, economic news, sports updates and international headlines coming your way read to you by Diana Master and Glenn Rashipura. In today's midday news update, the municipality of Alves Bay held a special council meeting at the Civic Centre Council Chamber. Councillor Trevino Forbes was re-elected as the mayor of Alves Bay for the 2023 term of office. Councillor Sara Mutondoka was elected as the de deputy mayor of the harbour town. Councillor Richard Hoeb was elected as the chairperson of the management committee. Let's take a look at this video. Hi, Councillor Ronald Noel Bramble. Here I nominate Councillor Serena Forbes as Mayor of the Local Authority Council of North Bay for the 2023 term of office. I count the Tribunal Forbes accept the nomination <coughs> of the term of office. Remember to engage us on social media as we continue to bring you pertinent news and events as they occur. Visual news is coming up right after this break.
Getting into our visual news clips, the undetectable equals untransmittable U equals U campaign conference took place on the 24th of November and was hosted at the Vindu Country Club Resort. Health Minister Deputy Director Esther Munyangwe emphasized the slogan, nothing for us without us, and its effectiveness in the, inclusive, in, in the inclusivity of young people in campaigns that concern them and their future well-being during the U equals U campaign. Let's have a look. integrated, affordable, accessible, quality healthcare services, responsive to the needs of the population. Director of Ceremony, ladies and gentlemen, today we are here to conduct yet another important health promotional intervention called U equals U, which is known as undetectable equals untransmittable, which is aiming at preventing the further spread of HIV. In August this year, 2022, the Ministry of Health and Social Services celebrated the milestone of achieving 97% of all children and adolescents living with HIV to be on dalutegravir-based regimens, the most effective ARV medicine at suppressing viral load. The Ministry of Health and Social Services continues to prioritize young people's health as they are not only the future leaders of tomorrow, but lead us right now, currently, in their own respective ways. Getting into our next video, Kennedy Kandume, acting CEO of Namibia Students Financial Assistance Fund, speaks at the launch of the refined online application process. Let's take a look. That is 2020-22-2023. The fund received 23,741 applications, of which 17,096 received financial assistance. In other words, they were successful in the application. This represents 72% of total application received, while only 6,645 applicants were rejected, which represents 28% of the application received. The unsuccessful applicants were mainly on, on the account of having exceeded the financial eligibility, which is a threshold of 500,000 per annum combined parental income or having already been funded by other institutions or have not met the academic performance as required 25 percent for those pursuing study at the undergraduate degree 22 in diploma and settlement and so on or have not submitted the required documentation so that we're able to do a proper assessment. So those were the account of, um, of rejection. Closing off our visual news, Olympic silver medalist Christine Boma is serving as the Marathon Sugar Brand Ambassador in an endorsement deal on her journey to the 2024 Olympic Games. Today, the Marathon Christine Boma Sugar 2kg, 2.5kg and 5kg packs in support of this one-of-a-kind partnership will be launched in support of the athlete. The brand has also over the years supported the Quinton Steel Boats Athletic Coaching and Training Clinics for many years. Have a look. <laughs> um, thank you for giving me this opportunity. It's an honor and privilege uh, for me to involve with Marathon Sugar and for me to share my story with you. Um, 
as some of you might know, might know I'm not some I'm not someone who talks a lot. I prefer to do my talking through line. <laughs> but I could like to share my story, my short story regarding my Olympic silver medal and how I got I got to be here today. Um, my Olympic um, Olympic story started while I was sitting in the stadium in Tokyo. I watched the 100 meter fin uh, women final as the stadium got quiet and the gun went off. I knew th this is who I want to be, this is what I want to do, and this is what I was going to do. When, I, when the 100 meter final called, I told myself, this is my time. When the stadium got silent, I was set in the block and ready to start. Then the gun went off. I started talking to myself and the world. As I was running into the van, telling, I was telling them about Namibia, telling them Namibia is a strong nation, told them about our beautiful country, I told them that Namibia is a diverse and happy nation with wonderful people. Um, as I was reaching the final stretch, I told the world that I am African woman, that African are strong and talented. I showed the world that Namibia are proud citizens of this world. When I crossed the finishing line, I started when I crossed the finishing line, I said to my, I mean, I said to the world, I am Christine Bowman. I am the silver medal at the Tokyo Olympic. I am, I am proud of myself and I'm proud of Namibia. And today I'm standing here and I am proud to be part of the Marathon Sugar family. They have been involved with Namibian athletic for many years and it's Truly an, an honor for me to on the newly launched limited edition. But I'm sure all this sugar will. <laughs> 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 I'm sure all this sugar will not only make uh, make me faster, will make all of, um, also make the rest of Namibia faster as it's really the best sugar in Namibia. <laughs> Thank you for coming for giving me this opportunity, and thank you for supporting Namibian sports. Thank you. After the break, we review pertinent stories from the country's daily newspapers. Stay with NMH at one. Chill Sessions is an entertainment show that brings you the latest hit, fashion, and entertainment news. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact chill at synergy.com.na. Chill Sessions, bringing art and entertainment to the people. Thank you for staying with Animation One. We now take a look at what the lead stories are in Namibia's daily newspapers. The Office of the Auditor General has found that the Namibia Broadcasting Corporation cannot explain evidence of pay as you earn capital set aside for its 2019 financial year. The latest report on the broadcaster shows, according to the Namibian Sun's front page. NBC budgeted 41 million Namibian dollars for PAYE expenses and 91 million Namibian dollars for interest and penalty expenses to be paid over the Namibia Revenue Agency its 2020 audit report shows. On the paper's page 3, a, fi a final environmental and social impact assessment report for phosphate mining at the coast has met the Environment Ministry's requirements. The report was submitted to the Ministry at the end of October for the planned Sandpiper Marine Phosphate Project near Valvas Bay. 
The Afrikaans Daily Newspaper Republican reports a total of 106 suspects in for poaching this year arrested. Meanwhile, role players make ready for wildlife protection and law enforcement efforts against wildlife crime in Namibia this festive season. Of these 106, 44 are for rhino poaching and 62 suspects for elephant poaching arrested. The Ministry of the Environment, Forestry and Tourism spokesperson Romeo Muyunda said what is disturbing is that 93 of those suspected are Namibians. Now the Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Netimo Nadin Daitwa, in her capacity as a chairperson of the Southern African Development Community Ministerial Committee of the Body on Politics, Defense and Security, opened an extraordinary meeting in Ventuk yesterday. The meeting discusses progress in implementing decisions taken during the 42nd summit of SADC heads of state on August 17th in Kinshasa, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. According to the Algamana Taitung front page of Aimba, people in the Gago Belt now face tough struggle for existence as early as 2023. Namibia and Angola want to start building the Baines hydropower plant on the Kunene River. Whether the offer of the contractors of Namibia and Angola through an environmental impact study to also obtain the opinions of the long known opponents of the projects and to minimize the risks is honest, that seems questionable. Heritage Health prevails against regulator in court in accordance with the Fintech High Court ruling. The Registrar of Health Insurance Companies has now also been ordered to revise its decisions on the self-financing gap within the premium increases of the medical aid. That brings us to the end of the first half of our newspaper review. We continue with the second half starting with the Namibian newspaper. The My.NA Cars Show provides viewers with the best in class cars content, engaging interviews, as well as a showcase of the latest cars related news, products, and services. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact My.NA at synergy.com.na. My.NA Cars, more than just a ride. We continue with the newspaper review. Landless People's Movement Deputy Leader Henny Saber says Swaba will still lose votes in the 2024 national elections despite electing Netibo Nandin Daitwa as their presidential candidate, the Namibian reports. He says there is already talk of a coalition government after 2024 elections. The LPM has traditionally maintained a love-hate relationship with President Hagi Gengob's administration, characterized by heckling in parliament during state of the nation addresses. Now, according to the papers, page three, defaulting local authorities and rural communities who are directly connected to Nam Water pipelines own the water utility about 1.6 billion million dollars with rural areas alone at 400 million million dollars. Confirming these figures yesterday, the Nam Water spokesperson Michael Mika warned that they would soon cut off water supplies for unpaid water accounts in rural communities. Moving over to the new era, a group of business people accused of being embroiled in a scheme that resulted in the finance ministry losing nearly 3.5 billion Namibian dollars in revenue will be tried in the Fintech High Court. The group was informed on Tuesday when they made an appearance in the Fintech Magistrates Court that the Prosecutor General has decided they will stand in the High Court. According to the paper Space 3, a Valves Bay woman is fighting tooth and nail to stop a local commercial bank from attaching the residence she and her two minor children called their home for the last five years. Standard Bank Namibia brought a civil suit in the Fintok High Court to obtain a judgment against her and her estranged husband. Even though there is a 25 basis points difference in the repo rate between Namibia and South Africa, the Bank of Namibia does not expect much change in terms of capital outflow from the local economy. The prime lending rates in the two countries are now aligned at 10.5%. Last week, the South African Reserve Bank increased the repo rate by 75 basis points from 6.25% to 7%. Yesterday, the Bank of Namibia hiked the repo rate by 50 basis points from 6.25% to 6.75%. Now, GSE finds former officials of African Equity Empowerment Investments Limited. The full story coming up after the break as we head into economic news. In Business 7, you get news on current economic, financial and business matters in Namibia. 
The weekly show features interviews with experts and in-depth analysis of burning issues in a way that caters for ordinary Namibians and business connoisseurs alike. For news-related or advertising queries, please contact b7 at synergy.com.na. Let's take a look at the news headlining the economic scene. The JSE has imposed fines and issued public censors on two former officials from companies linked to businessman Iqbal Survey Abdul Malik Sali, the former chief investment officer at African Equity Empowerment Investments Limited, was found to be one of the people responsible for transgressing listings requirements with regard to AO Technologies' controversial 2018 interim results. These contained errors and were published shortly after the IT group was listed on the stock exchange exchange in December 2017. Sali was a briefly AO CFO in 2019. The JSE fined him 250,000 rand. AO on the other hand was fined 6.5 million rand in 2020 for the publication of those results which contained material errors. AO is a technology company that falls within Survey Segunjalo's stable of companies. It is a subsidiary of AEEI which itself is a subsidiary of Segunjalo Investment Holdings. SIH is 100% owned by a trust which has survey as a trustee. The JSE said on Tuesday that it had fined AO's other former CFO, Nahid Kamil Den, 250,000 rand for breaching listing requirements, specifically with regards to payments involving boutique asset management company, Three Laws Capital, which was expected to manage funds for the tech firm. Sekunjala was the majority shareholder of Three Laws at the time. The Bose said it considered that both Sali and Kamil Dean were transparent and fully cooperated with its investigations when it decided on the fine. The JSE's investigation into other current and former AO officials is ongoing. In our next story, more than 38.77 million million dollars has been paid in total for human wildlife conflicts since 2008. The amount paid each year for wildlife conflict has increased from 70,000 million dollars in 2008 to more than 7.72 million dollars million this year. In 2021, a total of 590 human wildlife conflict cases were reported, which included 10 people who were killed in wildlife attacks. This is according to a presentation made by the Environment Ministry of the Namibia Professional Hunting Association's annual general meeting. Now, according to the presentation, human wildlife conflict is caused by competition for resources between growing human and wildlife populations, movements of people, and continued negative attitudes towards wildlife and problem animals. Now, the presentation noted that conflict caused by wildlife results in the loss of human lives, injuries to people, predation, and killing of livestock, damage to property, destruction of crops and gardens, and competition with livestock for forage. Now, other causes include careless exposure to areas populated by dangerous wildlife and modification of wildlife habitats due to infrastructure development and development projects. And although government recognizes that such conflict has always existed, it is not always possible to eradicate it all, the ministry noted. Now, millions were lost. Meanwhile, the direct cost of theft and predation on livestock farms amounted over $14.7 million and $22.5 million, respectively, last year. Let's take a look at our economic indicators. One U.S. dollar trades for 17.15 Namibian dollars, a 0.4% increase in local currency. The stock prices on the Namibia Stock Exchange remain unchanged. Local index remains unchanged, while the overall index increased by 2.12%. Gold is valued at 1,753 US dollars, while Brent crude oil is valued at 86 US dollars and 69 cents per barrel. Now, 19 high-profile defendants in the hidden debt case are accused of a wide range of financial crimes connected to illicit state-backed loans. This and more stories from the African continent coming up right here on NMH at One. Thank you. 
region. For news related or advertising queries, contact Irongo Talk at synergy.com.na. Irongo Talk, our community, your news. Headlining news from Africa, the 19 high-profile defendants in the hidden debt case are accused of a wide range of financial crimes connected to illicit state-backed loans. A court, in, a court in Mozambique has begun handing down verdicts in the country's biggest corruption scandal in which the government unleashed a financial earthquake by, by trying to conceal huge debts. The 19 high-profile defendants, who include former state security officials and the son of an ex-president, faced charges ranging from money laundering to bribery and blackmail related to a $2 billion hidden debt scandal that crashed the nation's economy. Judge Efigenio Baptista of the Maputo City Court said on Wednesday that reading the 1,388-page judgment was likely to take five days. The trial, which started in August last year, ran until March. All the accused who were present in court on Wednesday have denied any wrongdoing. The scandal arose after state-owned companies in the impoverished country illicitly borrowed $2 billion in 2013 and 2014 from international banks to buy a tuna fishing fleet and surveillance vessels. The government masked the loans from parliament and the public. When the hidden debt finally surfaced in 2016, donors, including the International Monetary Fund, cut off financial support, triggering a sovereign debt default and currency collapse. An independent audit found $500 million of the loans had been diverted. The money remains unaccounted for. Former Finance Minister Manuel Chang, who signed off the loans, has been held in South Africa since 2018, pending extradition to the United States for allegedly using the U.S. financial system to carry out the fraudulent scheme. Former President Armando Gubuza, who was in office when the loans were contracted, testified at the trial. He was not charged himself, but his eldest son, Ndambi, was in the dock along with the 18 other defendants. In our next story, young people from Tigray's capital, Mekele, took part in a peace parade with many hoping that the ceasefire agreed upon between Ethiopia's government and rebels may mean they can soon return to school. Schools and many other services have been closed for over two years in Tigray since fighting broke out in 2020. The Peace for All Carnival in Mekele was organized by the Tigray Development Association in collaboration with the locally renowned Circus Tigray on Saturday. Among the 600 participants who marched through town, led by a police orchestra, were about 200 children performing circus skills and martial arts. Sehufa Gan Heli Meriam, Deputy Executive Director of the TDA, said that the peace agreement between the two warring parties is crucial for the people of Degray. Eyobe Birhane, a teacher and secretary at Circus Degray too, expressed his hopes for peace. Despite the peace agreement, there are uncertainties about its implementation. Now, fertilizers currently stored in Europe will prevent catastrophic crop loss on the African continent, UN says. The first shipment of Russian fertilizer bound for Africa has left the Netherlands after days of wrangling to ensure it was not snagged by Western sanctions. Dutch and United Nations officials said some 20,000 tons of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium left on board the MV Greenwich from the southern Dutch port of Tenelzen on Tuesday afternoon. The ship was chartered by the UN's Food Security Agency the World Food Program and the cargo is part of some 216 incidents directly connected incidents directly connected with the construction of the stadiums and 37 deaths were attributed to other reasons. Now pressed by Morgan about the number of deaths among migrant workers in the wider efforts to get Qatar ready for the World Cup, he said the estimate is around 400, between 400 and 500. I don't have the exact number. That's something that's been discussed. One death is too many. It's as simple as that. Now, Al Tawadi added, I think every year the health and safety standards on the sites are improving, at least on our sites, the World Cup sites, the ones that we are responsible for, responsible for almost definitely. Now, a spokesperson for Qatar's Supreme Committee for Delivery and Legacy on Tuesday confirmed that there had been three work-related deaths during the construction of World Cup stadiums and 37 non-work-related deaths. Separate codes regarding figures refer to nation statistics covering the period of 2014 to 2020 for all work-related fatalities nationwide in Qatar covering all
all sectors and nationalities, the spokesperson added in a statement. Now getting into our next story, the Philippines must find a way to explore for oil and gas in the, in the South China Sea, even without a deal with China. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said on Thursday, emphasizing his country's right to exploit energy reserves in the contested waterway. That's a big thing for us. That is why we need to fight for what is ours and take advantage if there really is oil there. Marcos told reporters, talks over joint energy exploration between Manila and Beijing in the South China Sea had been terminated. The previous government said, in June, citing constitutional constraints and issues of sovereignty. Marcus's remarks came after his Foreign Affairs Secretary said in August Manila was open to new talks with China on oil and gas exploration and that a deal with China or any other country must comply with Philippine laws. The Philippines relies heavily on imported fuel for its energy needs, making it vulnerable to supply shocks and rising oil prices, which have helped to push up inflation to a near 14-year high. Philippine firm PXP Energy Corp, which holds an exploration permit in the Reed Bank, a disputed area, has had talks with China National Offshore Oil Corp on a joint venture. But Manila and Beijing's conflicting claims have prevented it from undertaking further drilling and reaching a deal with CNOOC. We'll be back with your sports news right after this break. Flex is your health and fitness show that focuses on the health of the mind, body and spirit. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact zone at synergy.com.na. Getting into our local sports, members of the Namibia Football Association, which falls under the FIFA appointed NC, are attending an ordinary Congress meeting in Ventuk this weekend. Namibia Football Association NFA members will meet this weekend during a Congress aimed at focusing on financial reporting as well as other activities within the association at the Nampawa Hall on Saturday. The members of Team Namibia have arrived in Lilongwe, Malawi for the 2022 Region 5 Youth Games, which start on Friday. Namibia has sent 102 personnel comprising 70 athletes and 32 officials to the Games. First to arrive was the football team led by Namibia Sports Commission Chief Administrator Freddy Mia, Coach Marcelo Wakudumo and his assistant Gerald Gunter, who arrived on Sunday with a group of seven players. Next Friday, Bergen Jensen, 19, together with Kevin Lowe, Daniel Hahn, both 17, and Kaspar Kruger, 27, will take on the Ned Bank Desert Dash Ultra Mountain Bike Marathon over 397 kilometers from Ventuk via the Komas Hochland and the Namib Desert to Swakopmund. Do, um, do stick around <laughs> for the international sports news right after this. Klets Kompas is een Afrikaanse continuïteitsprogram met Namibische nies en onderhouden. Als jij je handelsmerk of veldtop op jullie platform wil vertoon, contact kletsatsynergy.com.na. Exciting times in Qatar as the World Cup continues and with that let's take a look at the results from yesterday's games. Wabi Khazri's stunning goal gave Tunisia a 1-0 victory over defending champions France, but the win was not enough to send them to the knockout stage. For only the second time in their history, the Socceroos managed to progress to the knockout stage thanks to Matthew Lakey's second half goal beating Denmark 1-0. Now, despite Lionel Messi's unforgettable penalty kick miss, the Albi Celeste booked themselves a spot in the World Cup Round 16 after handing Poland a crushing 2-0 defeat. And finally, Mexico defeated Saudi Arabia 2-1 but agonizingly went out of the World Cup on goal difference on a night of incredible drama in Doha. 
Now for the rest of the international sports news. Lionel Messi had a penalty saved, but Argentina still advanced to the last 16 of the World Cup as Group C winners after a 2-0 victory over Poland on Wednesday. Poland also went through as runners-up, although a 2-1 win for Mexico over Saudi Arabia and the group's other game meant that the side advanced only on goal difference. In our next story, Mexico scored twice in five second half minutes in a thrilling last-ditch effort to stay in the World Cup on Wednesday, beating Saudi Arabia 2-1, but agonizingly missing out on the last 16 on goal differences. Goals from Henry Martin and Luis Chavez soon after the interval catapulted Mexico back into contention, but a stirring of superb saves by Saudi keeper Mohamed al awais and two disallowed efforts denied them rather that denied them the elusive goal they needed to advance. Bringing us to the end of our international sports stories, Sevens hopes of staging some massive upsets at this weekend's Dubai Sevens look slim, especially after a pay row has engulfed the African nation ahead of the tournament and looks set to leave some of their stars at home. Already facing an uphill battle in facing the Blitzbox World Series champions Australia and Great Britain in a tough Pool A, some of Kenya's Sevens stars took to social media this week to ask for donations after they had not been paid for months. If you are just joining us, this is NMH at 1, and we'll get into the highlights from today's broadcast right after this. Tourismus Namibia is a weekly tourism show that brings you the latest news in the tourism industry and topics related to that. If you would like to feature your brand or campaign on this platform, contact tourismus at synergy.com.na for news and advertising related queries. Tourismus, bring the world to Namibia. You're watching Animation One, and if you're just joining us, here are the highlights from today's broadcast. The 19 high-profile defendants in the hidden debt case are accused of a wide range of financial crimes connected to illicit state-backed loans. The Philippines must find a way to explore for oil and gas in the South China Sea, even without a deal with China. In sports, members of Team Namibia have arrived in Lilongwe, Malawi for the 2022 Region 5 Youth Games, which start on Friday. Those have been your highlights. Remember to tune in every weekday at at 1 p.m. to spend your lunch hour with NMH at 1, catching up on the latest news in Namibia, Africa and the world, ranging from current affairs, economic news, sports and international headlines. That's it from us in studio, but don't go anywhere because up next is We Talk. One. Hello and welcome to another episode of We Talk and welcome to the month of December. It is officially the festive season so you can hang out your Christmas decorations with absolutely no shame. We don't judge and we judge even less about the love, for, uh, the love of Christmas here on We Talk. So in today's episode of We Talk, we are going to have a look at the Documents Warehouse's Brainery Academy that they will be launching soon or will be launching for the year soon. And as always, we have a new segment, a life hack and a recommendation because what can I say, tis the season. We'll be right back with the news. And in our news for today, we are starting with an update on a company that is very controversially present in Namibia, that is Recon Africa. So although the share prices for Recon Africa dropped um, to two Canadian dollars and six cents on the 6th of November and a week later, dipped to below the two dollar mark where it has been hovering ever since, according to Yahoo Finance. The Canadian gas and oil exploration company, Reconnaissance Energy Africa, that is Recon Africa, which has been controversially exploring for oil in the Kavango region for the past two years, has now filed another application based on which it wants to drill more test wells. 
Recon Africa had announced earlier this year that it would need further capital if it was to continue after drilling the third well at Makandia and completing the second phase of their seismic surveys. How the company envisions capitalizing remains unknown, as does the possibility that it has reserves after all. That the Namibian government has long since ceased trying to keep its promise to only allow Recon Africa to drill two exploration wells in the Kavango region following advertisements in various media. According to the advertisement, the equally controversial company Risk Based Solutions, or RBS, on behalf of Recon Africa's Namibian subsidiary Reconnaissance Energy Namibia, or REN, is now calls on the public to submit their objections and comments before the 16th of December 2022. The application is for an environmental compat compatibility certificate for the drilling of several exploration and reconnaissance wells with associated infrastructure such as prospect pits, access roads and related services in the Kavango sedimentary basin. While Bennett Kaure, the Director of Parks and Wildlife Management in the Ministry of Environment, is awarding uh, the Chairman of the Association of Game Reserves and Communal Forests in the Eastern and Western Kavango regions the title of Best Conservationist for 2022, his colleague, the Namibian Environment um, Commissioner, is now to issue another ECC for the highly controversial oil exploration in this conservation area. Recon Africa is also no, no longer beating around the bush, having applied for permission to drill um, several wells in the Kavango region. Priority is given to four drill sites specifically. So you can check out our website, that is we.com.na, uh, for more on the story and details on these specific wells. And then in our second story for today, the Namibian Police Chief Inspector General Joseph Shikongo said that just over 10,000 members were employed by the Namibian Police by the middle of November, adding that around 800 members were employed by the force when it was established on the 26th of November 1990. By 2016, there were more than 17,000 members, but due to a high turnover rate and the absence of replacement, this number was drastic re uh, drastically reduced, and by mid-November, the number stood at only slightly more than 10,000 police officers. The international target rate is of one police officer per 90 citizens, but with a national estimated population of 2.5 million in Namibia, this is a challenge with only one police officer for every 250 citizens. Nevertheless, Shikongo said that NAMPOL can still deploy manpower where it is needed, but they also benefit from its established air wing, the criminal investigation unit, and the special field force together with the special reserve force. In the 2021 to 2022 financial year, 98,640 criminal cases were filed with the police. That is 7% more than in the previous financial year. Shikongo added that 165,604 cases were carried over from the previous financial year and a total of 122 cases, 122,428 cases were concluded in the 2021 to 2022 financial year. At a completion rate of 46.3%, this means that 141,816 cases were transferred to this financial year by, uh, by the year end of the 2021-2022 financial year. Shikonga referred to the revision of NAMPOL's 2017-2022 to strategic plan with which he wants to make his vision of the best police force in Africa and the world a reality. The development and management of human capital, the use of, in, of information and technology partnerships and international co uh, cooperation will be given a priority, he says. As members of the police force, we will have to be accountable to the people that we serve. Our morality and behavior should never be called into question. That means we as police officers must strive to do the right thing, even if no one sees it, he concluded. And in our third and final story for today, we are still on a policing note as the Ombudsman of Namibia, Mr. Basilius Diakua, has slammed the city of Vintok for a decision to charge residents for police service, the services. The municipality last week announced that as of 1 January 2023, requests for police assistance during racing events, sporting events and other events will be charged at $52.50 per hour, while a road accident report will cost 63 Namibian dollars. A statement obtained from a complainants, witnesses and victims will be at $63 million per statement, it said. The Akua expressed disagreement with the decision, adding that if the public will be charged for those services, the city is missing the point. Police services are part of the core mandate of the government to provide these services to the public. 
In fact, for any nation, the backbone of the police service is very important. In no instance should we have a case of the government charging for these services, the Ombudsman said. According to him, if these services aren't free alongside health care and education, government isn't offering anything to Namibians. Health, water and education are not for free. So what is? It should not reach a point where we should pay for police services. This will then only be accessible to the wealthy who can afford it and they will be the only ones protected from criminals. Diakua said that charging for police services is prevalent in developing countries because they can afford it, but added that Namibia is very, uh, is very much so far from that point. In Namibia, we cannot re afford to rely on private security for our services. That would not be affordable for many of our people. Security in general is the government's responsibility and should not become a commodity that can only be offered to the rich. City police is not private. He added that residents already pay for these services through rates and taxes and adding that paying double would be unfair. So that concludes our news segment for today. Um, be sure to check out our website at we.com.na, that is we.com.na, for all the latest news every single day from Vintuk and the surrounding communities. But we will be right back with the rest of your episode of We Talk. Hi, I'm Chantal Klaassen. I've recently joined the Document Warehouse team and I am the Digital Sales Manager. Hi, my name is Marlies Cohen. I'm the Chief Business Development Officer also at the Document Warehouse. The Document Warehouse is a leader in records and information management. Um, we help local companies to digitalize. We do everything from training, handholding, offer uh, a great product called M-Files, which is an intelligent information management system. So if you're looking to go from paper to electronic documents to actually using the information in your company to grow, um, then the Document Warehouse is able to help with everything from archiving, bulk scanning, um, using electronic documents and making sure that the right people have access to the right information at the right time using M-Files. The Document Warehouse is a leader in records and information management. Um, we help local companies to digitalize. We um, do hand-holding and we help them through the entire process, all the way from archiving physical paper documents, bulk scanning, getting these documents to be e-electronic documents, and actually using M-Files as an information management system. Okay, so this year the Document Warehouse launched the Brainery Academy, which is a 10-day um, free program where unemployed Namibians can apply um, to spend some time with our staff at the Document Warehouse. Okay. During this 10-day program, we make provision for transport as well as lunch. We also give them the opportunity to complete an um, Impulse Online Training Academy which we hope um, by attaining these certificates that when they apply for jobs as our clients, who's also using MFALS, that they would have a better um, opportunity to get the job than other applicants. Um, MFALS is an intelligent information management system uh, developed um, at the MFALS headquarters in Finland. Um, and what this does is it helps you to manage your documents, your records, and your actual information so that the right people get access to the right information at the right time. In addition to that, it's got quite a number of features that allow you to automate workflows, create um, easier administrative processes, um, make sure that the right people see the right things, um, so that you can focus on what your business and organization does instead of pa uh, pushing paper and administration. So that's what that system helps you to achieve. Okay. So a lot of times businesses feel that records management is not that important, but in actual fact, um, records and paper and documents are the evidence that something happened. It's, the, it's a currency of the company. It's, it's very important and therefore um, we try to, with the academy, create awareness of how, what, is, what goes on in the world of records management and paper management and document management and also why, why, why is it important um, for a company to know what they have and to know where it's stored and to know yeah, where to, how to easily find it when and as they need it. So when, when um, 
young people come in and they learn about using uh, technology or a software. So they're in improving their digital uh, skills. So they might have learned a lot of things in theory, um, at university, etc. Um, but this is really practical application where they get to implement the information that they've learned and learn a ton of new things. In addition to that, they get an opportunity to be exposed to a working environment. We know a lot of graduates graduated a year, two, three, four, five years ago. They've never had an opportunity um, to generate an income and now they get exposed to a working environment. They get to spend time with a digital solutions team. They get to um, shadow the MD. They get um, some tips and like one-on-one -on -one time to help them with their CVs, to help them become more employable and to showcase their skill sets. Um, and of course, they get an opportunity to learn a product like M-Files um, where they, if they apply to any of the clients that we work with that use that system, that definitely puts them a step ahead of the crowd. Um, yeah, so really exposure, connecting with other young people that are on the same program at the same time, um, and sort of maintaining that community of young people that are willing to learn, that want to jack up their tech game, um, and really want to add and contribute um, by being an employed person that adds value to Namibia. Okay. So of course we always have um, vacancies at the Document Warehouse, especially in our digital solutions department. Um, we have currently, from all the candidates this year, we've chosen five candidates which were successful and which showed, showed potential in M-Files and which showed potential in that, the willingness to learn. So we said um, stay on and we employed them and they are currently junior solutions architects and they are doing quite well. Um, unfortunately, we can't um, accommodate all the applicants, um, but we, we hope that when they leave by learning some soft skills that they can, that it will help them to, to apply successfully or to be successful in their next job application. So